Now we are going to talk about handling dependency injection. The idea of dependency injection can get too complex too quickly, but we are going to build a very simple solution from scratch so it would make the whole concept easier to grasp. Right now, I have an email service that handles sending an email. I also have a notification manager that would use this email service and then handles the notifications in this notify method. Currently, if I want to use this notification manager in my index.php, I have to create an email service as well. So I could pass it to the constructor like this new email service, new notification manager where I pass the email service and then use the notify. So every time I have to know exactly what this email service needs. Also, if I have an SMS service in the notification manager, I should also create that as well. And imagine using this notification manager all across your project. Then if one thing changes in this email service, I would have to edit a lot of things across the whole code base and it could be very messy and very hard to maintain. If there was a way for me to just get the notification manager without all this extra code, it would be great, right? Well, that's where dependency injection comes to play we are going to code a service container that would handle all of this and I would just get the notification manager from that service container and just use it like this container get notification manager and then just use the notify method so let's build the service container in this service container I have a method get which would check if a service exists in the container or not. So first we check if it exists in the service. Then we get the instance and pass it to the service. So if it's set, we get it. We are passing this, which is the whole service container. So it could use it in the closure. But what if it wasn't already in the service array? We first check if we have a class like that. We can use class exists. And if there is a class with that name, we can create a reflector. So we could understand what that class needs as dependency. We can create a reflector with reflection class. We would check if the reflector isn't instantiable like this. Now we do have a class and it is instantiable. Let's get the constructor to see what it needs. We can do it by get constructor method. If the method constructor is null, it means there have been no constructor defined. So it doesn't have any dependency and we can just create a new object like this. Otherwise, we should get what parameter it has. We can do it by get parameters. Now for each of these parameters, we can do the exact same by calling this get again and again. We can put everything in an array map function like this. And now we can use this reflector with all the dependencies and return that. Till now, our code looks like this. So now when I call get notification manager in my index.php, it would come here and check if it already exists in the services. If it doesn't, it checks if the class exists and then create a reflector and then gets the constructor and the parameter. It needs an email service, so it would go through the whole thing again for email service and it would check everything for the email service again. Finally, it would give me the notification manager with the email service, but I haven't passed the email service. This code handled it for me. So let's run the code and perfect. As you can see, it has run the notify and sent an email. Instead of letting this do everything automatically, I could also register them myself manually as well. How could I do that? Well, using a register method like this. First, we would register the email service and then we would register the notification manager and we would get the email service from the container. So if there is something specific that we need to change about email service, we would change it only in one place. Let's write the code for register method. 
which would get the name of the service and the callback like this and it would add the service name and the closure to the services now let's go back to our code and run it again perfect as you can see it works again without any problem we can comment the manual registering for now that's it this is a very simple service container but this helps understand the whole service injection concepts in frameworks like laravel you can continue and build other functionalities to it and improve it for practice enjoy coding